Farming in the family probably goes back hundreds of years, but in 2013, we made the step into robots and that was tremendously successful. Not only from a labor efficiency standpoint, but what they did for the cows. And it made dairying so much fun, it uh, put us on the road to this. Unfortunately, we ran out of room at our old site. There was nothing, everything was full. The silos were full, everything was full. And as soon as we tried to touch one thing to make it bigger, well, we would have to touch everything. You, you get to love your, your, your barns. You, you, they become a piece of your soul. And uh, so it, it kind of hurt me a little bit to leave those buildings and to leave that site um, and to even consider building a new site. Uh, I had never dreamed I would ever do this. I've gotten to know HFH through hearing about Roger Borson's barn. So I went to go visit the site and uh, was impressed with what I saw. The journey to the Crossvent barn was a little bit surprising for me. I had entertained the idea of it lightly. Uh, I was aware of what it was, but it was actually stepping into a barn in Indiana in August with some 2,200 cows under that roof on a hot, humid August day that just made me decide this is what I have to have. Nothing compares with the atmosphere, with the uh, air quality. Uh, with a cross vent, we know that every time those, those fans make a revolution, they're not recirculating air, or moving it around quickly within the barn, they're exchanging it. They're, they're pulling old stuff out and bringing new air in. I've just taken what I've really liked and what really works in different places and put it all under one roof. We decided to employ robotic feeding with the uh, Lily's vector system. The vector goes around the barn and it pushes feed in at the same time as measuring how much feed is left in the different zones throughout the barn. It then makes a decision based on a bunch of parameters that we've given it on what zone to feed next. With high production cows, one of the keys to high production is always making sure there's adequate amounts of fresh feed in the manger at all the time. How we did this in our old system was by overfeeding 10% every day. And through this system, I don't even know if we're 1% overfeeding. Uh, the vector system doesn't work out of towers. It's using a kitchen. And the kitchen allows me a lot of flexibility. It allows me to feed uh, multiple ingredients and different ingredients that you're not necessarily able to auger. Within 96 hours, we shipped 10 to 15% milk, more milk than we had ever shipped before. That only took them 96 hours. They quickly got rid of uh, half a dozen cows, pulled some ingredients out of the ration to get them to slow down a little bit. And as we're fine tuning the barn, they continue to sneak up on me in the number of liters that they're pushing out. So I, I don't know how we're going to slow them down. <laughs> we have to, I have to figure that one out yet. The robotic milking center, obviously the, the heart of it all. Any cow with any issue gets pulled out on this side. So all the work that we have to do in a day is all on this end of the barn. It's all in a very small management zone. The robotic calf feeding, we're still working out some of the bugs with it, but we are seeing results. And I'm 100% sure they will be worth it. Uh, the calf nursery is a bit of an amalgamation of a couple of ideas I've seen through some other barns. We decided to put a, a complete manure pit, or like a, a completely slatted, so that all the liquid drains off of the manure pack. And the straw just stays that much drier, that much longer. Have some pit ventilation to draw all the dirty air down so that the dirty air in the manure pit doesn't come up into the calf room. And that's probably one of the things that you won't see in a lot of other barns, is a manure pit under the, under the, under the calves. I did get a comment from a guy touring through yesterday as well, and he said, I don't see a single bad calf in this whole calf nursery. <laughs> But the building makes it easy, a great environment. Uh, and finally, this education room. I figured, well, what I should do is, instead of closing the doors and locking people out of my barn, is trying to take an active role in bringing them into the barn. So the purpose of this room 
mission is to bring grade three, grade four kids, and especially maybe grade 11 and grade 12 when somebody's thinking about getting involved in science somehow and thinks that uh, all the science jobs are far away in the city, but there's all sorts of science related jobs related to agriculture. And it could be as close as right here. So we, we'll be able to bring the experts into the barn here to dispel some of the myths about agriculture. For people who are wondering, should they spend money on a new building? Your feed is by far your single largest cost in your cost of production. Now, usually followed by labor, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones, energy, etc. down the line. Your mortgage on your barn ends up being such a small part of your cost of production, to spend the extra money to do things right ends up costing you so very little. It'll usually add less than a, a percent to your co total overall cost of reduction, but it can pay dividends in reduced maintenance down the road, uh, reduced labor, increased feed efficiency. And so your building is not a good place to start saving money. Among the reasons we chose HFH was that first visit to the Roger Borson barn. I saw uh, their premium builder, there's no doubt about that. Oh, there was a line at the front of their contract that said something to the effect that they, uh, when we price stuff, it's all in. Uh, we're not gonna ding you at the end for all the extras. And, uh, and that was the case at the end here. There were some changes that happened along the way and they added them in, they, they did them, and uh, we were never billed for it. And obviously they hired some good talent that know their stuff and get to work right away and, uh, and and get the stuff done properly. Especially within the time frame, they had the manpower to get the project done in the time frame that we wanted it done. Truthfully, this was actually done before schedule. So we were super happy with that. And obviously Dave was working behind the scenes making sure it went well. Everybody within the organization was very professional. Would I, would I go down the road with HFH again on another project? For sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, I'd highly recommend it to anyone. If this would burn down tomorrow, and I, hopefully it doesn't, but I mean, I would, uh, it's a no-brainer to go back there. I've recommended them to a bunch of friends already. My wife and I intend to keep on daring for quite a while.